Um, I needed to make this video because um, I noticed that there's a lot of videos on uh, YouTube uh, about how to repair laptop batteries. Now, um, now replacing the batteries is 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 one step, but before you take the batteries out, and provided that there's a voltage in the in the battery pack of at least a few volts, uh, at least about two volts per cell then you should consider um, taking some precautions because now these are all these are all um, boards out of battery packs and I've studied uh, I've been studying these for the last uh, few weeks actually about a month and um, what I found out was that they've all got a memory on the chip when you take the power from the board, when you disconnect the battery pack, when you take the cells out of the pack, the program is lost. So what happens is you'll often lose thermal monitoring. That means you're losing thermal safety. So when you put the new batteries into the pack, you're actually endangering yourself. And I thought I had to make this video because... Um, a lot of people are just completely unaware of this. Now, what this means basically is that the thermal monitoring no longer works. Now, I'm going to show you what I've got. I've got an elaborate setup over here, actually. I've been doing a lot of tests. I've got a voltmeter. I'm currently discharging some cells at the moment. Uh, I'm actually running that light up there. It's an LED light. I'm actually running that off uh, these cells here. Now, I don't expect you to understand all the wiring, but I've got these cells in parallel with these three cells over here. I've actually got a battery monitor circuit connected at the moment, and it's, flash it's giving me a red LED flashing. That tells me that the batteries are on the verge of uh, going flat. Now, the reason I've... This is one circuit board. Oh, sorry, the light's not very good. This is one circuit board I took out of one battery pack. This is another circuit board I took out of another battery pack, right? And this is another circuit board I took out of another battery pack. All of these circuit boards are currently wired up to the same battery pack, which I'm using as a test rig. Now, the reason I'm doing this is quite simple. I'm comparing them. I want to see if which packs turn the power off first because I've actually been building in my own battery pack so I want to uh, <coughs> I want to be able to uh, use the best boards obviously I thought well I might as well utilize them now <coughs> what I, as I say what I found out was and this is important really is that when you take your batteries out of your your um, laptop battery you need to maintain a voltage on the board to keep it from losing its memory because the memory is volatile it's not static it's not <coughs> it's not um, like you know if you take the CMOS battery out of your computer the BIOS loses its settings does it not well this is basically the same thing the battery pack has been pre-configured using serial data interface and once you remove the power, those settings are lost. And unless you know how to use a serial data connection and, re and access the chip and reprogram the configuration information, such as the temperature um, thermal cut out, or if it's going to cut out. So if, you, if your battery pack overheats and you haven't configured that after you remove the batteries and put new ones in, if you've not configured that, then your pack is no longer protected. So that is risky, to say the least. Um, and now to prove that, now here's a this pack here. This pack here is connected to this meter here. Now, if I heat this um, probe, this thermistor here, that should cut the power off to the meter. Correct? Is it not? Well. <coughs> Let's just test this. I've got my little lighter here now. This shouldn't take more than um, a few seconds. I'm trying to get my camera. It's 
very hard to see where I am. Right, if I heat this probe, it should only take seconds. Oops, I nearly set fire to the probe. Look, the meter's still on. The probe, it is actually smoking just then. In other words, this board, this board here, has no thermal protection whatsoever. So if this board here, our battery pack, having been disconnected from the supply and then reconnected to these other cells, no longer provides protection. Now, this other board over here, which is quite a long one actually, um, I have been testing this one. And this one does maintain its programming. Now, to demonstrate that, just get the, uh, I've actually put the temperature probe, which is here on a longer wire. Oh, it's a bit hard to see. Now, to demonstrate that, I need to get the angle a bit better, but now <coughs> I'm going to put this probe, I'll put it on the end of a wire. Now, I'm going to point it up at the light, I can't get it there. Now this probe is on that circuit which turns that light off. Now if you watch this, there you go, the light's gone out. Th this circuit is working. Now I can't see a damn thing. <laughs> I have to uh, Disconnect this board. Well, well, it's good. Disconnect to the negative terminal. Wait 10 seconds. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oops, I, uh, I, I intermittently broke the connection. Just a minute. I have to win. I have to count again. 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ah, hmm. Oh, I know what I've done. I pulled the wire out. Ah. Ah. You see, these to reactivate them like that chappy does. Oh, and there's another video I've seen. You can do it that way, but I've got this disconnected, so there's another way of doing it. I'm just going to disconnect my positive and my negative. I'll wait a few seconds. And well, I'm in the light now. Put the positive back. And put the negative back. Oh, damn it. I'll pull this out for something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, right, let's reset the board completely. Disconnect all the terminals, right. This is what happens sometimes when you're filming. You basically got to take the power off a few. Right, we're just gonna wait. Oh, three seconds. Start connecting everything back on again. This board's quite good actually, I went and destroyed another one the other day. I'm going to have to put the camera down. Hang on. <laughs> I need to lift this board up at one end because I can't get to the connection properly. Sorry. Uh. Okay, let's use the jump wire. Our friend on the internet uh, told us about the jump wire. Let me just put the camera down because it's... Uh, I can't hold the jump wire in both places at once. Positive. Positive. Come on, you bugger. Oh. Unless the probe's still hot, that could be it. Actually, have I pulled another wire off? Sorry, just get this camera so we can see what I'm doing. I have to jump start it from positive supply. 
it's not staying on, so just a moment. I have to disconnect all the wires. Reconnect. It's because I interrupted the circuit. The circuit detected a fault somewhere, so it decided to keep the power turned off. And I've got to allow the circuit to, to lose the recall of what it what you just recorded. Now, these boards are all different. <coughs> Some of them will remember their settings, like this one. Others will not. It's probably because I've got that big, big bright light on it. Let's try it with an LED. I've got the right one. It would help if I put the LED the right way around. It's a flashing LED, by the way. It's got its own built-in IC, IC chip and biasing resistor. So... Obviously, a normal LED, you need to bias it with a 1K at 12 volt. Mm -hmm. I've got, I have, I, I had got it the right way around. I nearly had it then. I haven't got, I haven't got it kickstarted though. I'm going to disconnect this board and give it a bit longer to to lose its program because it's it's obviously detected a fault somewhere and as a consequence it will it refuses to put the power on which is what a good safety board is supposed to do if there's a problem somewhere with um, with the battery pack for example a good safety board would remember <clears throat> Store that information and say, no, you know, I'm not going to put the juice back on. There's a problem. It could cause a hazard. Well, <clears throat> I'm just going to give that a few seconds. Okay, well, reconnect. I'm going to put the negative on first. Actually, this time. Normally, when I didn't up the negative, it actually comes back. But um. I went intermittently, broke the connection again, and it, it uh oh, there's something wrong here, and it kept the power off. Right, I'm just putting the crocodile leads on the other end. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, now jump start this. Okay. From positive to positive and it's not having it it's not staying on when I take my connection off now that's just typical I hope I haven't destroyed it <laughs> well it might appear that the, the battery is a bit too low so that could be the problem but anyway as I demonstrated um, one circuit as uh, is completely no good. It's lost its memory and its capability to make a temperature and the probe actually I melted the end of it. It's actually uh, it's a bit frazzled. Um, the, the white stuff's just hard stuff or whatever is just coming off. But anyway, <clears throat> loads of battery packs, loads of circuits um, which I've, uh, I've opened up and I've been testing them all. Um, one by one and I can tell you that most of them do lose their programming you, you can do this test yourself but what I, when I found, I found this out quite simply actually because there was uh, some of the packs have a, a battery meter like this one when you press the little button and what happened was like this pack over here what happened was when I uh, took the power off. Let's see, let's get this. This has got a battery meter on it. 
Alright, I found an exact same board as this one. And uh, what happened was, it's somewhere over here, this one. What happened was, this particular one is when I press the, well, there's no batteries connected at the moment, but when I press the button, instead of getting um, four LEDs, I was getting the first LED, which is the 25%, and I was getting the third LED, which is 75% flashing. So the first and the third LEDs were flashing on off, indicating that there was a fault or that the, the, the circuit was no longer set correctly. Well, this is because it had forgotten its programming once the power had been removed. I also thought, well, can I test this theory? Well, I found another battery pack which was working. Uh, let's see. And this is the board. This is the board. It's, uh, let's get some light. <laughs> there we go. Right. And uh, if you can see on the other side, there's some LEDs on the board. And this was working perfectly. And then I disconnected it from the pack. And when I went to reconnect it to a new battery, the LEDs were all flashing. All four of them were flashing on and off, indicating it had forgotten its programming. And I was really disappointed. I thought, well, this is a pretty neat board. I could have used this one. And uh, now it's kaput. It's kaput. What's the word? Completely kaput. Yeah, it needs reprogramming. And I can't be asked to get into serial data programming. So, uh, yes, that one's, <coughs> that one's going to be going in a scrap pile until someday when I feel like going online and doing some serial research. Because every single board is slightly different. And um, so, anyway, I'm just going to stop the video for a bit because I keep waffling, I know. <laughs> right, okay, let me just sh talk you, walk you through this now. Right. By the way, that other board, I think that's destroyed. This is how sensitive they are. You just have to do the wrong thing and your board is knackered. Mind you, I've got dozens more like so <laughs> I'm not too worried now okay you've got your battery right now the way to safely replace your batteries what you need to do is here's your first cell and that's your uh, let's see 3.7 <clears throat> and then the next cell that would be what um, I think that's 7.4 7 isn't it I think I can't add anyway the next cell is your 11 volt <coughs> right let's just <coughs> go through this your B sense that goes to ground negative terminal that's usually the a black wire sense wire that comes from the circuit board and your volts low it's usually a, a yellow wire but the color coding might be different so you have to be careful look on the board and make sure you you see you look for where it might say VL or it might say VH for volts high VL goes to the first cell positive terminal on your next next cell which is some point four volts you've got your volts high and it's usually a white wire that goes to the second cell and then you've got your your third cell this is for a six uh, a three s pack by the way mm -hmm. so and and your last cell is 11 volt obviously and that's plus volts now how do you keep your board active while you're actually taking your um, batteries out of it I mean I mean you're going to need basically three voltages 
you're going to need 3.7 volts, you're going to need 7.4 volts, and you're going to need 11 volts. Now, obviously, that's the trick. When you take your batteries out, now, you don't want to be having too many wires floating around with highly fully charged cells and, and partially discharged cells because you might have a lot of current flowing and things might get hot. So what you can do is this. <clears throat> Create yourself a voltage divider. Get three resistors, one kilo ohm each. Wire them all in series. And at one end, connect it to a 11-volt supply. Oh, 12 should be all right, actually. But make sure it's not too high, because these, as I said, these, these safety bars detect over-voltage. If the bar detects excessive volts, it could disable itself completely, and you might get no power out of it at all. You're actually better off with a lower voltage than a higher one. So... Let's imagine that, uh, for example, these battery packs are designed to run down to about 3 volts, or well, 2.5 volts per cell before the circuit cuts out. So you're quite safe to use, say, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, about 8, 9 volts. Right, okay. Find a 9 volt power supply DC adapter. Connect the 9 volts through all three resistors in series okay now connect your yellow wire well this this circuit has to be live by the way if, while you actually before you remove the batteries from your pack so connect another wire to the yellow wire on the pack connect that other wire to the where the yellow wire is on the first series resistor on the bridge on the uh, bridge network connect the white wire after the second one kilo ohm resistor to the next junction and then obviously that should do it and oh your red wire from your pack from your PCB uh, needs to go to the uh, 9 volt supply now, once you've done that, you'll be able to keep the board active while you're working on it, but just be careful with it. It's very sensitive to um, short circuits and things like that. Don't get any, uh, <clears throat> yeah, just don't mess around too much. Just, I mean, I've, I've demonstrated already, I've already destroyed two boards, two of these uh, protection boards, just while making videos. And I tell you, I didn't do anything wrong that I, I can think of other than disconnecting the um, power supply and reconnecting it so the slightest spike and the board seems to detect a fault it must be programmed to detect spikes and surges and disable the circuitry if that happens so you've got to be very careful that you don't introduce too many spikes to the board while you're wiring this up that's why I'm suggesting you use resistors because with a, res a resistor network, you're going to have a very low, imp you're going to have quite a high impedance actually. And don't worry about the circuit. The actual circuit on the um, in these battery packs uses very small amount of current. You're talking microamps, microamps. I mean, not even a milliamp. We're talking um, thousands of a milliamp, you know, in power really. So this bridge network of one kilo ohm resistors will be sufficient to keep the board energized while you're working on it so right <clears throat> then once you've got this wired up to the board to keep it energized then you can safely disconnect all the leads from the batteries remove all the batteries uh, reconnect all the new batteries to the uh, to the pack and once you've got all of the new batteries connected to the pack and they're all um, powering the safety board once they're all powering the safety board then you can remove your um, little three resistor bridge network so hopefully that will keep the board from losing its uh, programming and and hopefully get you out of a bit of trouble <laughs> um, I mean obviously the last thing you want to do is have a safety board which isn't the safety board anymore because if it loses its uh, thermal sensing ability and protection then you're not really uh, protecting yourself anymore are you? so 
anyway, I hope that helps. And uh, if anybody else has got a better way of doing it, um, I'm happy to have video feedback um, on here. So, but uh, yeah, I'm going to have to start digging through them, them other pet safety boards. I put them all back in my uh, pot noodle jar, by the way. <laughs> Um, sorry about the lighting, I know it's not really good, but I've got to go looking for another one, because I think that other one's gone. It's not working anymore. Um, I don't know why the camera's so dark. I thought I'd set this all up, but it's it's just, I don't know what it is. It's just gone really dark on me. Um, it's just ridiculous, actually. I've been trying to get this sorted out earlier, and... Huh... Never mind. Anyway, thanks for watching.